Leo Gray on behalf of Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center in Palm Springs. Please visit us online at urbanyoga.org or Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook to check out our class schedule and to stop by the tip jar to throw something in when you can. We have classes online every day and four days a week locally, in person, details online. We'll start in a reclined posture today. We're going to be on our backs with our feet together. So depending on how it feels for you, you might bring the soles of your feet together and then lie down, or some people like to lie down and then bring their feet together. And if you have blocks and you want to, you might put the blocks between the outsides of your legs and the floor like this to take the weight of your legs and make the posture more passive. And if it doesn't feel good anywhere to have your feet together, your knees open, it might bother your hips or your legs. You could instead just plant the soles of your feet on the floor and let your knees lean in towards each other a bit. Start out like that instead. Your hands might just be on the floor or you might like to rest your hands on your body, on your belly, you can feel your breath moving, on your chest, feel for your heartbeat, maybe just resting on your body to feel the grounding weight of your hands. Close your eyes if you want to. Notice your breath. And just by noticing it, it will probably start to get slower and deeper. Feel your contact with the floor, with the blocks if you're using blocks to support your legs. If your hands are resting on your body, feel that contact, that grounding weight. Take in the movements of your breathing and whatever sensations accompany those movements. Scan that wonderful body of yours, head to toe. Notice whatever is going on, whatever sensations are present. Not aiming to change anything, just observing, taking stock. In particular, take note of anything that doesn't feel good any stiffness or soreness. So you can keep these things in mind during practice, knowing that you're free to skip or modify anything at all, especially if it's to accommodate an issue going on in your body. Sometimes you skip or modify things just on a whim or because of a feeling, it doesn't have to be physical but you're especially welcome to find the practice that's best for you by skipping or modifying to work around whatever's going on, to accommodate yourself. Whenever your mind goes elsewhere, drifts away from your breathing, drifts away from observing your body, maybe goes off the mat and out of the room entirely, gently redirect, come back to focusing inward, observing yourself, honoring your experience, finding the right practice for you today. With no notion in advance of what that's going to look like, just taking each step, each breath, each posture, movement, sequence, as it comes. If 
And if in addition to our shared intentions of observing ourselves, taking care of ourselves, you want to set some other intention specific to you for this practice, you can go ahead and do so now. with our intentions in place, let's take three deep cleansing breaths. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth with a sigh. If you have the soles of your feet together, your knees splayed apart, bring your hands to your legs, let your arms nudge your knees towards each other, let the soles of your feet come to rest on the mat. If you had blocks here, move the blocks out of the way so we can do this twist. Cross your left ankle over your right knee, right heel in towards your butt as close as it'll go. Reach your arms out to the sides, feel your shoulder blades press to the floor. Let your legs fall to the right. Turn your head to the left. Don't worry about how far your legs go. Just let them drift. Let your breath kind of ring you out for a few cycles. And maybe the legs lower some more. Maybe they touch down already. Maybe they don't touch down, but go a little lower. Keep your shoulders grounded. Let your body find the degree of twist that it needs. Come back up to center and let's cross the legs the other way, right ankle over left knee. Let your legs fall to the left and turn your head to the right. Slowly come back to center, uncross your legs, draw your knees in, reach your feet up. And if you want, you could bring your hands to your legs anytime to support your legs, or might just let your hands stay on the ground. Make some circles with your right ankle. Make a few circles the other way. And then the left ankle, a few circles in each direction. Draw your knees towards your chest, hug your knees. Inhale, reach your hands and feet up towards the ceiling. Exhale, draw your knees towards your chest, draw your elbows to the floor, keep your fingers pointing up. And let's do that a few more times. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, bend your limbs and draw down. Then hug your knees and rock side to side or roll in circles to massage your low back against the floor. And we'll start to sit up. You might rock front to back a few times and come to a seat that way, or you might just tip to one side and press your hands to the floor to sit up. Not everyone likes to roll back and forth like this. We'll all meet sitting up. When you're ready, if you wanna rock a little more, go ahead. On your comfortable seat, it doesn't have to look like the way I'm sitting. Find grounding, find the length of your spine. Think of sitting tall without being stiff or rigid. Think of the crown of your head reaching up. Bring your hands to your sides, rest your fingertips on the floor. Inhale, reach your right arm up alongside your ear. Exhale, let your arm drape over your head. Let your fingers come to rest by your left ear. Let the arm over your head to the right. Left hand a little and reach out. Lengthen that side of the neck some more. If your left hand is raised, let it down. Let your head stay, sorry, let your neck stay passive and relax. Let your arm slide over and down and let your arm nudge your head back to the center and let that hand down. Inhale, lift your left arm up alongside your ear. Exhaling, let it drape over your head and let the weight of your arm draw your head to the left. If you want, raise your right hand to reach out through your fingertips, extending a bit more. If your right hand's raised, let it down. Let your neck stay relaxed and let your hands slide over, slide down to your cheek and then nudge your head back to the middle. Put that hand down. Walk your right hand out behind you. Bring your left hand across to your right leg. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head. As you exhale, invite your body to twist some more. Just inviting with each breath to see if there's a bit more room. Maybe twisting a little more. Maybe you already found enough of a twist. Let yourself unwind and come back through center. And walk your left hand behind you. Bring your right hand to your left leg. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, see about twisting some more. Let yourself unwind, come back through center. Rest your hands on your knees or your thighs. 
Inhale, draw your heart forward, let your head tip back. Exhale, draw your heart back, let your head tip forward. Continuing at your pace. See if you can use the whole inhale to bring your heart forward. Use your exhale to move back. And let's bring in a circular aspect to that movement. So as you come forward, go over to one side. As you come back, go to the other. Now check in with your grounding. See if you can keep both cheeks on the ground. Maybe even tune into the bones in the seat. Try to keep both sitting bones grounded. So maybe that makes the circle smaller. Maybe a little more control. Sometimes you start to circle, you can start to tip over. <laughs> can roll right onto your side. Or I have I have rolled right onto my back while doing this sometimes if I don't stay grounded. Try to lead with the heart. Be mindful of leading with the head. Leading with the head, you can go a little too far and tweak your neck. <laughs> At some point, change the direction of your circles. Maybe you're still inhaling on the forward half and exhaling on the back, or maybe you're letting that go. Just letting your breath flow without focusing on half circles. After your next exhale, let's sit up tall again. Work a little bit with the feet and the legs. So take whatever legs in front, hold your leg up, take the opposite hand and interlace your fingers between your toes as best you can. If that's too much, you could always just grab all the toes like that. Sometimes the interlacing is too tricky. I have a hard time because my hands are big, <laughs> getting all the fingers in. Let the ankle be slack and use your hand to make circles. So this is different from the circles we did when we were on our backs with the feet in the air because then the ankle was doing the action. Let the arm do the work and let the ankle be passive. Different feeling to it. Release your fingers, use both arms to support your leg, whatever grip works for you. I like to do this and get my fingers connected, but any grip works. Make some circles with the leg, rocking your femur in your hip socket. Change direction, take some the other way. Let that leg down, bring the other one to the front. Lift your leg, get your fingers between your toes. Start your circles, letting the arm do the work. I learned this from Becky Thompson, the first teacher who inspired me to think about teaching. Make some circles the other way. Becky swore that if you started to get into a heated exchange or argument with someone, that if you sit down on the floor and take your shoes off and start to do this, it will defuse the situation. I haven't tried it under fire. I somehow never seem to think of it when I start to get into a heated exchange. <laughs> Release your toes. 
cradle your leg, start those circles with your leg. Maybe one day I'll remember to do that. I don't know. I heard that from Becky six years ago <laughs> and it hasn't occurred to me yet in the heat of the moment. Take a few circles the other way. Becky wrote a great book called Survivors on the Yoga Mat, and it's a bunch of little stories about how folks started to recover from trauma through their yoga practice. One of the first, if not the first, nonfiction, non-textbooks of its kind. Fairly short book, easy read yet very moving sometimes. Let your leg down and let's come up onto our hands and knees. Take your time getting there. Bring your hips above your knees, your shoulders above your wrists or behind your wrists. If it's too much on your wrists, to have your shoulders right above your wrists. Reach back and press into the ball of your right foot and take a couple breaths. With an inhale, reach your left arm forward with your thumb pointing up. If you wanna go further, you can pick your right foot up, reach straight back like you wanna make a footprint on the wall. And if you wanna go even further, you can see about taking a bind, bend that leg, reach that hand back, maybe connect with your foot or your ankle, your pant leg, if you get the bind, lift your knee a little, lift your chin a little. Releasing any binds, let your knee and your hand back down. Take a few cow and cat breaths. Inhale, bring your heart forward, let your head and tailbone go up. Exhale, bring your heart up, let your head and tailbone come down. We've already done this movement, but it feels different when you do it on a different axis. When you do it on your knees instead of seated. After your next exhale, come back to table with a neutral spine. Reach back and press into the ball of your left foot. Let your leg lengthen for a couple of breaths. With an inhale, reach your right arm forward. If you want to go further, inhale, pick that left foot up, reach straight back. And if you'd like to go further, bend your knee. Reach that hand back, see if you can get the bind. If you can, raise your knee, raise your chin. If you can't get the bind, don't worry about it. You might still bend your knee and reach back. Releasing any binds, let hand and knee down. Take a few cow cat breaths. And after your next exhale, come back through table. We'll take child's pose for a little break. Bring your big toes together. If you like, send your knees further apart. Sit back towards your heels. You could walk your hands forward and just keep reaching forward. Or let your arms disengage and rest on the floor. Maybe your head comes to rest on the mat. Or you can stack your hands and rest your forehead on the back of your hands. Or put a yoga block between the floor and your forehead. 
to let your shoulders disengage. You might also try reaching your hands back by your feet instead. Come back to focusing on your breathing, scanning your body like we did at the beginning. Notice whatever there is to be noticed. Maybe comparing this body scan to the earlier body scan. Seeing what might have changed. Are there things you're noticing now you didn't notice before? Things you noticed before that you're not feeling now? There are no wrong answers. Just exploring these inquiries. Inhale, slowly come forward and up, back to table. If you've got blocks, you might bring the blocks under your hands to ease the next transition of starting to stand up into a forward fold. So with or without blocks, you're going to step one foot up between your hands. It's okay if it takes more than one step and it's okay if your hand helps your leg come forward. Then step the other foot forward and hang out with your arms and your head. Nice and heavy hanging down. Maybe your hands stay on blocks. Maybe they drag on the floor or hang in the air. Sway back and forth. Bend and straighten your legs, whatever degree feels beneficial in your legs this morning. Wow. Pardon that loud sound. <laughs> that was surprising even to me, the sound that just came out of my left knee. It didn't hurt. Don't say well, how to startle anyone. I was startled by the sound of my own joints. <laughs> Gently nod your head, yes. Yes, that was loud. Shake your head, no, no, it's nothing to worry about. Inhale, lift up halfway, press your hands to the front of your legs. Feel for the crown of your head moving forward away from your tailbone. Exhaling, relax down, back into your fold. Inhale, roll up to standing, hands overhead, hands come together. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Release your hands down, let them hang at your sides. Lift your left shoulder towards your ear, shift it back and let it down. And your right shoulder up and back and down. Inhale, reach for the walls. Exhaling, reach for your shoulder blades and hug yourself. Bring your chin over towards your shoulder. Let your chin roll down towards your sternum and up over by the other shoulder. And down towards your sternum. Back up to your shoulder. Turn your head back to center. 
Inhale, open your arms again. Exhale, cross the other way. Reach for the shoulder blades again. Bring your chin towards your shoulder. Let it roll down past your sternum and up to the other side. Down to the sternum. Up to the other side. Face forward. Inhale, open up. Exhale, tw twist to the left. Breathe here. Inhale, face forward. Exhale, twist to the right. Take a couple of breaths. Inhale, face forward. Exhale, let your arms come down. Inhale your arms out and up overhead. Interlace your fingers. Flip your palms towards the ceiling. Look up at your hands. Lift up your heart. Maybe you tip back more. Maybe your hips drift forward. Listen to your back. And bend as much as it feels good to you. Inhale to bring yourself upright. Exhale to bend to the left. Feel for length through both arms and try not to lift your right heel. Maybe bend your left knee a little and deepen your side bend. Inhale to come up through center. As you exhale, bend to your right. Feeling for length through both arms, keeping the left heel down, maybe bending the right knee. Inhale, come upright. Exhale, let your arms come down. Let's play with a little balancing. We're not gonna do anything too crazy. Bring your hands to your heart. Gonna play a bit with tree pose and come into it nice and easy. Set your eyes on something straight ahead at eye level, something that won't move. Shift your weight from one leg to the other with your feet planted. When you're ready, let the weight come into your left leg. Let that knee remain soft. Don't lock up your knee. Turn your right toes out to the side so your feet are perpendicular. Draw your heel up onto your ankle, ball of your foot on the ground. So that's tree pose there. And there are lots of different variations you might do. You might keep the foot there. You might bring the sole of your foot to your calf. You might bring the sole of your foot to your thigh. You don't want to press sideways on your knee. Your hands can stay here, pressing together and pressing to your sternum. That can be very steadying. But the branches of your tree can grow into any shape you want. Explore movement or aim at stillness. And any time you might put the right foot down and pick it up again. Check in with your breath. Feel the rising of the inhale and the rooting of the exhale. If your hands are elsewhere, bring them to your heart again. Pivot your right knee forward. Let your foot down. Shake that left leg and shake anything else that wants a shake. And when you're ready, bring your hands to your heart again. Reset your eyes. Shift back and forth to reset your hips. Reground your feet. When you're ready, bring the weight into your right leg. Turn your left toes out. Start to draw your left heel in. 
and up onto your ankle. See what position will work for you on this side with those feet, those legs. Maybe it's the same as the other side, maybe it's different. Let your arms find whatever expression is calling you this time. Maybe that's the same thing, maybe it's not. You can drop your foot anytime, you can change your mind about the position, about the expression. That foot didn't want to stay in my thigh. And there's no need to try to make it do so. It can be fun to challenge ourselves. It's no fun to beat ourselves up or get upset when something doesn't go the way we started to plan. If your hands are elsewhere, bring them back to your heart. Bring your knee forward and let your foot down and shake as needed. And let's have a seat. Come to a seat on the floor with your legs extended forward and your feet flexed back towards you. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold down over your legs. If your knees want to bend, let them bend. On the inhales, think of the crown of your head reaching forward. On the exhales, think of lowering some more. Feel for release in your lower back. Thinking length as you inhale, thinking lower as you exhale. Inhaling, walk your hands up the front of your legs and sit yourself up. Reorient myself for this next one. Let your arms help your legs open out to whatever degree is okay for you. Don't force anything. Now let your arms help your legs bend the right leg, bring the left foot over here like tree pose, to that opposite thigh, opposite knee. Pivot your torso, aim your sternum and your left foot. Flex your left foot back towards you. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold down over that leg. Reach your left arm out to the side. Turn your head to look towards your hand. Turn your thumb down. Bend your elbow, reach the back of your hand towards your right hip. Feel your left shoulder back. Yanni's here with us today. I'm so glad. This find is something Yanni came up with while we're practicing together. 
just playing around exploring one day. And I kept trying different things, deciding where I wanted to add it in the sequence. And this is what we ended up with. Feels really good in the back. Extend the arm again and slide that left hand back over by the right hand. Open your right arm to the side, turn your head, follow your hand, turn your thumb down, bending your elbow, reach the back of your hand towards your left hip, peel your right shoulder back. My dear Yanni does not often make it to classes these days with urban yoga, but we practice together when we can on our own. Yanni is my beloved partner. Extend that arm again and reach your arm up alongside your ear, overhead, like you want to tap your left hand with your right hand. Now, I'm not going to come anywhere near doing that. That's just the direction I'm reaching in. There are folks out here, out here, out there. <laughs> there are folks in the world who can reach over their head and touch the other hand. I'm not one of them. Take your time to reach up and reach out to the right again and sweep your arm back across. So your right hand meets up with your left hand and walk your hands up the front of your leg. Let your arms help your legs extend this right leg and bend the left one, bring the foot across, pivot your torso, flex your foot towards you. Inhale, reach up, exhale, fold down, take a couple breaths. Sweep your right arm to the side, turn your head to follow, turn your thumb down, reach the back of your hand towards your left hip, feel your right shoulder back, exploring Yanni's bind. Extend your arm again. And bring the right hand back over by the left. Sweep your left arm out. Turn your head. Turn your thumb down. Bend your elbow. Reach the back of your hand towards your right hip as you feel your left shoulder back. Extend your arm, reach it up alongside your ear and overhead towards the opposite foot. Reach up and out to the left. Sweep your arm back across in front of you. Left hand rejoins the right. Walk your hands up your leg and sit yourself up. Let your arms help extend the left leg, nudge the legs in towards each other. We're gonna come onto our backs. I'm gonna spin around for sake of the camera here. Lower down onto your back. Grab your strap on the way there if it's not in reach already. Bring your knees towards your chest, hug your knees, and rock and roll on your back, massage it against the floor. Take your strap, your scarf, your resistance band, whatever you've got, and Holding one end in each hand, run it under your feet. 
Notice your contact with the floor. You want the back of your head and your shoulder blades and your sacrum, the bony plate of the base of your spine, to remain on the floor as you reach your feet up. Long arms, long strap, long legs. Point your toes at the ceiling. Point your toes towards your face. Let your feet relax. Slide your feet apart, keeping them inside the support. Slide your feet back towards each other, pulling gently on each end. Take your left foot out of the strap, press the back of your left leg to the floor, hold the strap in your left hand, and reach your right arm to the side. Keeping your shoulder blades grounded, draw your leg over to the left and turn your head to the right. Just letting your breath ring you out, allowing the leg to maybe go over a little further, maybe drop a little lower if it wants to. Adjusting tension on the strap to accommodate movement or sensation as it arises. Softly come back up through center. Hold the strap with your left hand. No, hold the strap with your right hand. <laughs> Press your left hand down to the front of your left hip bone. Let your limbs fall to the right, keeping the left side down, left hip anchored, left cheek on the ground. I spend a whole class mirroring, and near the end, when I'm not mirroring, it messes me up. <laughs> Teachers, we spend so much time saying left when we're doing right and vice versa. That when we stop doing that, it messes us up. We always want to go very slowly and gently to come out of this one. Take your time, bring those limbs back to center and lift your left leg. Step your left foot inside your strap. Take your right leg out, press the back of your right leg down. Reach your left arm out to the side. Draw your leg over to the right and turn your head to the left.
Gently come back up through center. Take the strap in your left hand, press down on the front of your right hip bone, let the limbs fall to the left, keeping the right side down. Nice and easy, come back up to center. Raise your right leg, draw your knees in and set your strap aside. Hug your knees, you can rock and roll on your back. As much as you want. And then reach your feet up, take hold of your feet or legs and play with movement in happy baby pose. You can invert for as long as you like. When you feel complete, there's no rush. Make your way to your final resting pose, which can be anything you want. Maybe it's the traditional final posture of corpse pose with your legs extended, your feet splayed open, your hands on the floor at your sides. It's more important to be comfortable than to be in this particular posture. You could come back to the posture you started in if you want, or maybe some other resting pose. Find what's comfortable for you. Just allowing your breath to slow down, not directing it. Perhaps simply focusing on your breath, maybe picturing the edges of your nostrils where the air moves in and out of you. Maybe recalling an intention you set and reflecting upon it. Maybe making the choice to let your mind unfocus and drift, which has a different effect when we do it intentionally than when it drifts on its own unintentionally.
Start to give yourself some deeper breaths. Let your body move around bit by bit. Taking your time to gradually let your movements grow bigger and bigger. Any movements your body wants. When you're ready, bigger movements. And gently sit yourself up. And if you like, you can bring your hands up by your heart. Thank you all for sharing practice today. The light within me sees and honors that same light in each of you. Namaste.